Hi, it's Jen Maleka, the Holistic Health Boss, your functional diagnostic nutrition health coach and functional training expert. And I just got back from the most amazing 23 day trip to Europe. I traveled around Croatia and Italy and the Netherlands. I met up with some really good old friends and I even met some new ones. And while I was certainly expecting there to be a lot of adventure during this trip, I didn't really expect to be coming home with as many health lessons as I learned while I was gone. And I wanted to share some of those with you guys this week because I think that learning from other people's experiences and hearing other people's stories can be so helpful in our own journey sometimes. You know, sometimes it takes getting out of your own space to actually appreciate the things that we have in life and we can also just get really stuck sometimes you know I see this all the time with clients that I work with um, whether it's before they come to me or even during our work together we all have a tendency to get really stuck in this place where um, we don't really appreciate what's going on around us we don't have the gratitude for our health or what's been happening for us or the journey that we're on and it takes a shift sometimes to really recognize this um, this becomes so apparent I think when I first start working with clients because they are in such a place of feeling basically like fat sick and tired all the time and um, a victim of their circumstances that they really don't know any other way of life and they get in this really kind of negative or down on themselves type of mentality and that's because of the way that they've been feeling and and they don't even know what it's like to feel well and I think that we've all have been there at some point in our lives and it takes like changing or shifting a few things to help them realize like what it actually is like to feel good or the possibilities and I call this when I work with clients usually the first um, 30 to 90 days I would consider the honeymoon phase but even within a matter of a week of working together with some small changes to their diet and their lifestyle they start feeling better and this is the honeymoon phase and one of my favorite phrases is that you only know what you know until you know something different so if you've been stuck in a place of feeling just fat, sick, and tired all the time, or even just kind of flat in your life, um, it's because you don't have a frame of reference for something different. And so once you make a little shift, you can cultivate that gratitude or appreciation and um, start to create more consistency with that overall. So we only know what we know until we know something different and that was one of the things that I actually realized while I was on this trip in Europe. Um, and I want to share with you guys kind of the importance of consistency this week as well as the top four health lessons that I learned while I was away. So you know I've been at this health game now um, and the way that I talk about it to you guys and the way that I teach it to my clients for a little over three years, almost four years at this point in time. And I'm not perfect. I've had my ups and downs in it as well as I've been working on my, whole, on my own health um, over the course of the last couple of years. And dur during my journey through Europe, it really made me realize a lot of things about my health that I hadn't thought about in a long time or um, that I didn't necessarily recognize before or understand. Because again, like sometimes we can just get in our, stuck in our state of our current being, of whether that's feeling bad or whether it's actually feeling good and we forget what it was like on the other side sometimes. So the first lesson that I came home with is that Meditation is a must. Um, I have been consistently um, engaging in a meditation practice for almost a year now. And my new state of normal as a result of that has been this calm, cool, and collected me. While I was on, in Europe, it was a little bit challenging to stick to my meditation habits or routines. Um, I wasn't in my regular morning routine. We were on the go all the time, moving from different place to different place, and then also just getting up early to sightseeing, and meditation wasn't exactly like happening on a regular basis. And I started to notice this when the more anxious, um, irritable, like short-tempered version of my old self kind of came back. 
and I hadn't seen the side of me in a long time and it just made me realize that meditation is non-negotiable as my friend and colleague Molly Hamill will say that I can really it made me see how much it's made a difference in my life and how important it is for me to consistently engage in that meditation practice because when we're living with like or working in a short as a short fuse or short tempered all the time that shortens our lifespan it engages the fight or flight process which disrupts our hormones and it causes the body to age faster and I don't want any of those things so this trip to Europe and um, not practicing regularly really made me see the difference and how important that consistency is and meditation is definitely a must for me and I would say for absolutely everybody uh, the second lesson that I learned and came home with was that I am way better off without gluten and dairy. Now I'll tell you that I ate my heart out when it came to pasta and bread and um, cheese, I mean pounds and pounds of cheese probably, and I normally do not do that at home. Over the last couple years, I've been cultivating a lifestyle that is basically gluten and dairy free 90% of the time. I mean, I have maybe a little bit here or there, um, more so on the dairy side than any kind of gluten because it really disrupts my health. Um, when I have it here in the States, my digestion is upset for a couple of days, like I get a little bit of anxiety. And when I went to Europe, I decided, well, when in Rome, do as the Romans do, right? And so I was eating the food over there. But also, one of the reasons that I allowed myself to do that, just so you guys know, is because gluten and dairy is actually kind of different over in Europe. They don't manufacture it or process it or genetically modify it in the way that we do over here in the States. So in some sense, it's healthier for you or safer for you, I guess I could say. Um, so while I was eating all this pasta and dairy and bread and everything like that, gluten over in Europe, one of the things that I noticed is that I didn't have any of the digestive systems the symptoms that I would normally have here in the States if I were to, to do that. Like my digestive system was actually great. I had no anxiety, which was awesome. Um, and so it was us. It was just fantastic. Like most people would probably consider like, yay, like gluten and dairy don't affect me or something. But I still did notice some other little things like other small signs that let me know that gluten and dairy are, just don't agree with me. Um, every morning I would wake up with like nasal congestion, like a stuffy nose, like my um, taste buds and my smelling senses were not as strong as they normally are. And I was definitely experiencing a little bit of joint aches and pains too, which were for sure signs that gluten and dairy just ultimately, even though I don't feel that digestive upset when I'm there, that they still are inflammatory and harmful for the body. So I shouldn't be fooled by that. And that there is, it is important to create, continue creating that consistency when it comes to my diet, because those things are so damaging for us and inflammatory internally. The third lesson that I learned was, um, or is actually more of a reminder because I actually preach this to my clients was making time to metabolize. I don't think that we finished a single meal in under two hours except for breakfast. And that's not because we were sitting around stuffing our faces the whole time, but it's just because the culture in Europe is to actually sit down and enjoy your meal and to have conversation and to bond with people. And they're not like speeding and trying to get different courses out to you and get you out of there. Actually, I think a really fun fact that I learned about Europe was that when they make a reservation or when you reserve that table for the night, they actually don't see anybody else there. It helps them to plan for how much food that they should have in the kitchen. And also it allows you as much time as possible to like sit and enjoy your meal. And here in the States, it's completely opposite, right? We eat on the go all the time. And one of the things that I noticed was huge about this for me is I had zero digestive upset when I was over there. So even in the States, when I eat the most healthiest food sometimes, I still can get some digestive upset, which is usually associated with eating on the go or with stress but in Europe I didn't have that because I was actually sitting down and giving myself time to actually digest and metabolize my food and I tell this to my clients all the time and again I'm not perfect there's always things that I can improve upon and so I'll be bringing a little bit of Europe back with me and it was a friendly reminder that I need to slow down when it comes to meals reduce that digestive stress and honor my body and give it that time that it needs to ad adequately metabolize my food and then the last and fourth lesson that I want to share with you guys is it's working. 
all of these things, all of this time and energy and effort that I have invested in um, healing my gut and rebalancing my hormones and improving my health is actually working. And this was probably the biggest realization that I had when I was in Europe because I remember going to Europe three years ago on my honeymoon and I've been to Europe almost every year since. And each time I can remember, um, it's gotten better every year, but specifically three years ago, how bad it was. I was just bloated all the time. I was extremely fatigued. I mean, I remember going out to eat lunch or dinner and feeling like I needed to take a nap right afterwards or just being exhausted all the time. I mean, I kept going because of the fun of the trip, but I was just totally tired. And I remember experiencing jet lag before. And this time I had none of that. My energy was up always. Like I felt like I could keep going all day long. I mean, there were days that we were walking 10 miles or more consistently and I had no bloating, I had no fatigue at all, and I didn't have an ounce of jet lag. And so this is that sign. I mean, sometimes, like I was saying, we get caught in this place of like, not appreciating or having gratitude for our current situation. We either are stuck in feeling just bad all the time, or then we get into a place where we feel good and we forget what it's like to feel bad. And then we start questioning or rationalizing, like, do we really need to be doing all these healthy things? Like, you know, everything, we feel fine. Why should we keep eating healthy? Or maybe we can like slip up and that's not necessarily the case. So this was just a huge reminder for me or like realization that, all of this that I've invested in my health is actually working and I can physically like see that it's working for me because I feel like I'm, I felt like a much different person this time around than I did in the years past. So consistency is key again, you know, continuing to cultivate this healthy lifestyle. You know, one of my other favorite phrases is that healthy is a way of being. It's not a, it's not about doing. And that's one of the things that I want you guys to take away from this and why I'm sharing this with you is because because to be, you know, truly healthy is, is to live into this lifestyle, um, to cultivate something that is consistent and is always going to be with you. It's about becoming a healthy person. It's not these 30 day stints of doing this diet or this workout routine or whatever it is. To truly be healthy, we have to embrace it and we have to create consistency with it overall and then the more that you do that the more results will come in the long run so there is no quick fix or short time frame for how you improve your health it's actually a journey you know even people like me who appear to be healthy we always have room for improvement and things to work on um, i have weeks or days or months when i can be really great about things and then you know something might get in the way and i need to get myself back on track and but then I also have moments like this, like taking this trip to Europe, which helped me to appreciate how much effort I have put in and how much has actually changed for me. So I hope that you guys found something in this that resonated with you that um, made you think also about your state of being. Are you in a stuck state of feeling fat, sick and tired all the time? Or have you gotten to a place where you're actually feeling really good and you forget what it's like to feel bad and you've lost some appreciation or gratitude for how far that you've come? So whatever it is, I hope that you take that with you today. And I would love to hear from you too. You guys can leave it in the comments below on the video or hit reply if you're, you came from the email and share with me. Let me know like how this resonated with you. What's something that you took away from it or maybe a realization that you've had recently too as a result of a trip that you've been on or a circumstance that you've experienced. All right, you guys, hope you found that helpful and I will talk to you next week.